Okay. Bricks. The last part. Okay. For bricks. Mm. Let's say you are swapping between wheels and everything, right? Okay. I'll show you quickly how to remove the uh, how to adjust the brakes here I mean so in this case this is the brake shoe okay oh no wrong side I know undo this bolt here now undoing that bolt right will cause this to spin freely Okay, this this brake shoe right can move in multiple angles. Can move up, down, left, right like this, pitch and everything. Can move all like like three sixty thing. Actually, not really three sixty, but you get the idea. Okay, so how to ensure that is always it always land straight on flat on your brake surface right? Is by actually tying or pulling on the cable first so now you see it's loose what you want to do is I can see the brake track the brake track is from here to here so you want to use your hand to press it on just nice first okay I need to look closely you know usually get up and close the bike to see once you, you can see it nicely sorry uh. you can see it nicely like this you want to press press it tight Press your brakes tight. Make sure that it's pressed up on the bike tightly. You can see one more time from the high, high, high view angle. Like this, right? Okay, it's loose. And look at it closely. Make sure it's lined up with the brake track. And then you press it tight. This will cause it to be flat. Lah. And then from here, you just tighten it. Okay. Okay, and then you're done. This is how you do your brake shoe. How you make sure that it lands flat on your brake track. Okay? So you say if you don't do it properly, right? Your brake shoe might be like this, and your brake track might be like this, and then it lands like this. What it causes, right? Yeah, it causes like uneven wear on your brake track. Yeah, so you need to take note of this. You want you oh, generally want to avoid it uh, because it can damage your brake shoe and your brake track. So once you're done with the brake shoe and everything, you want to make sure that it bites uh, or it presses on your brake track right, evenly. You want them to close in just nice at the same time together, not one more than the other. What I mean right, is like this. Currently right, it's uneven, you can see. You can see one right hits the wheel first and it's pressing on the wheel. Yeah, let me yeah. See even though my wheel spins just nice right when I brake right, you can see my wheel moving towards me. Towards the right side. Can you see over there? Mm, a bit hard, but it's okay though. Yeah. 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 You don't want that to happen. Now there's two ways to solve this. There's the botch way. And that's the proper way. <laughs> so, the on the fly botch way when you're on the right, right, what you usually do, right, is you just eyeball it. You grab the whole, um, but this is only for a single mount, single pivot. For direct mount run, right, they have a they have a dedicated screw, which is actually it is here, a very weird placement down here. There's like a size two. Or size 3 what it does right it moves the the brake pads right so that is it moves it so that's just nice in between but if you are on the on the on the road on the fly let's say you want to quickly adjust it right you just grab it eyeball it and then you just pull one side closer the side that's um, not even uh. and then now it lands evenly The wheel should be stationary, it shouldn't move. If the wheel wobbles like, like this, right? 
push it one side right that means the brakes right are not hitting it evenly again so you have to adjust it for now right i see that it's perfectly okay there's one small screw at the side it the job is exactly or the purpose is exactly the same you undo it or you you tightening it right will move it this way and undoing it will move it this way it will vary between uh, the brakes uh, but more usual than not it basically just adjusts where it moves okay so when you adjust the brake shoe you adjust the brake shoe when you are changing uh between wheels like from wheel to wheel because each wheel will have a uh, different height your brake tracks and everything different placements basically so you need to adjust the brake shoe and another thing when you're changing from carbon to alloy wheels right you have to change the brake pads yeah the brake pads how you want to do it is this screw here this small screw here you undo it and you can slide the brake pad out and then you slide the alloy one in and then you just tighten it it's just that simple i will not demonstrate to you now because it's quite easy uh. just undo it slide it out slide the alloy one in and tighten it that's all you gotta do okay so after this i'll show you how to tighten the brake okay because that's also like a method or a way to tighten the brake for the brakes they also have a barrel adjuster so now it is undone you can see it's not it's not pulling the brakes anymore this this part here is the barrel adjuster so i want to adjust it so that it's back at the middle point always remember everything is it should be on the middle point so that you can tighten and loosen it so now it's at the middle point what you want to do first is to keep this close keep this close the one that helps you remove your wheel keep, keep that close keep it close like this okay squeeze your brakes so that it's touching the wheel fully close remember fully close and then pull the brake uh the brake cable pull it downwards and then just tighten it fully remember you want to do this fairly tight not too tight of course but fairly tight because it's your brakes okay once you do this it may be able to spin but the clearance is very very tight like very tight so you want to because the the gap between clearance meaning the gap between the brake pads and the wheels it's like maybe one to two millimeters you ideally want it at three to five millimeters that's better uh, a three to four millimeters i mean three to five is too much so in order to increase the gap right what you want to do right is to and do it a little bit more like this using the bar adjuster to adjust the gap don't know if you can see from the camera in this angle but I am making it so that there's a larger gap and I'm checking if one side is preemptively pushing it in any direction or they are touching it evenly so you say you want you like tight clear or you want to have a very fast engagement meaning you press very slightly and then your brakes start activating already right you can actually have a tighter clearance to do that you need a tighter clearance so you usually want to adjust it so that you can have Can have it tighter. For me, I find this just nice. This is how I like my bike, which is right in the middle. Not too much, not too little. Okay, so that's basically how you do it. And then when you want to remove your wheel, always remember this lock here. You will open it up. So when installing installing the cables, right, you usually don't need to touch this. Just always keep it in lock. Yeah, the only time you need to touch this is when you're removing your wheels. Just keep that in mind. 
And lastly would be to apply some loop on your chain. So to apply loop, do I need to show loop, loop mm. application? I think it should be quite fast. Eh? Yeah. You have loop. <laughs> No, let me just give a brief that, uh, explanation of that I think it's okay. To apply loop right is very simple. How to do it right is you want to take the bottle, okay? Usually it's like a dripper bottle, okay? You want to put it here. So you usually want to put it at the bottom one right instead of the top one right because the bottom one will be engaging the chain and engaging the gears more often what i mean right is that the top one right will just stay outside you get it but this one is the one that is touching all your gears so this is where you want your your loop to be at so you take the bottle and then you squeeze it evenly while spinning it in reverse direction okay. Just do it all the way. So, sorry, huh? I'm gonna, so basically, I'm gonna squeeze the water like this. To have it evenly on every every link, make sure it's on every link. And then next, I'm gonna take a piece of cloth, grab it like this, and then spread it. Spread it evenly across all the links. This will help get rid of excess loop. Remember, if uh, you have too much loop, right, it can actually cause more drag or more friction because it. Attracts more gunk, and then you will, you will basically be additional additional resistance. Uh. So you want the just nice amount, right? That sits in between each link. The other excess one, just wipe it off, and then you're done. That's all. And you install the front wheels. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you for coming. What the fuck? She just said like, subscribe, and comment.